Hey guys, my name is Sean Chiplock. I'm a professional voice actor working out of Southern California for anime, video games, and whatever else I can get my hands on. And I'm also a frequent user of Voice123. How did you get started with anime voiceover? So anime voiceover was actually a unique entry point for me because that came out of a competition that I did uh, in a California uh, anime convention called Anime Expo. Um, back when I started going in 2009, they had a competition called AX Idol, which was being hosted by one of the local studios, Bang Zoom. Um, and AX Idol was basically the big, you know, practice dubbing an anime scene, come up with a monologue, get a chance to perform it in front of a large audience. And for me, uh, being a part of the finals and actually managing to win the competition not only got me in my foot in the door with Bang Zoom, um, but it also kind of served as a milestone to me. It, it proved to me that this was something that was entertaining, something that I enjoyed doing, and something that I wanted to continue to pursue. So I started my business relationship with Bang Zoom. I started with bit roles, non-named characters, background roles, built up trust with them over time. And eventually I started getting audition sides for actual named characters. Uh, booked my first gig as Diabelle in Sword Art Online and just continued building those relationships over the years. Met new clients, met new studios, and have been working on building my anime portfolio ever since. Out of the hundreds of animation characters you've narrated, do you have one that stood out to you the most and meant a lot to you? Can you tell us why? This may seem like a bit of a cop-out, but as of today, the first and foremost definitely has to be Subaru Natsuki from ReZero starting Life in Another World. Um, because not only is he totally awesome, he's also varied beyond compare! Uh, Subaru was definitely one of the most intense roles for me in, in many regards. He was the most vocally intense in terms of screaming. He was the most varied in terms of emotion, having, you know, extreme highs and very quiet lows. Um, and being able to portray him, especially since it was my first lead role in an anime, required me to be committed not only to being consistent with the character voice, but also it, it taught me a lot about caring for my throat as well. Um, but I really enjoyed all of the different scenarios I've had to portray as Subaru. Uh, Guido Mista from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, the cool mafioso type who's loyal to uh, uh, one of the Joe star of the arc, he's also a personal favorite because if ReZero is a series where Subaru had to be all over the place and, you know, he had intense moments, serious moments, realistic moments. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure I've referred to as, you know, hyperactivity the anime. And everyone takes themselves super seriously to the point of silliness. And Guido Mista, you know, is this sharpshooter who manages to hurt himself more often than he hurts the enemy. So being able to just play it up and be super campy, super eccentric was really fun in that regard. And finally, um, while it's not an anime, The Bedfellows was a really big one for me because uh, there's two characters I played in The Bedfellows. I played this very angry, very, you know, focused, bitter character named Sheen, and this very happy, very go-lucky character named Fatigue. And playing those two extremes was great contrast for each episode, but also it taught me how to adapt character voices. Because Sheen's, you know, very angry, very bitter voice, if you just take away some of the anger and make it very internal, now I sounded, I use this voice to voice Teba in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And with fatigue, if you took away the British accent and you just made it an American accent and you made it just a little more staccato, now you have Monotaro from Danganronpa V3. So they're very important to me because not only did I enjoy playing them, but adapting their voices literally helped me to create brand new character voices that allowed me to add to my portfolio down the road. What was the process you took in developing a voice to go with the character? <laughs> I answered the third character before I got into it. Um, Subaru Natsuki's development was uh, probably the closest to just being me, because it was as much a part of me wanting to show that I was capable of giving that kind of performance for the character. You know, he was young, he was determined, um, so I kind of pulled from, you know, my what, what is my go-to for a young male hero protagonist, but also what would someone sound like if they were determined, focused, you know, have a strong sense of justice? Emotion plays a really big part for me. Um, I'll often make the facial expressions that I'm trying to make when the character says something. You know, with, with Guido Mista, when he would have, you know, his super intense scene where he's just kind of being sarcastic and commenting because he's got the upper hand on a bad guy. You know, I would do the, I'd do the cool pose, you know, I'd, I'd smirk, I'd have like a hand up to my chin, you know, smirking out of the side of my mouth like, yeah, yeah, I've got you, I've got you where I want you. Because taking on that pose will help you embody the character and the voice will just come out naturally. 
Um, the expression was a really big thing for Sheen and Fatigue from Bedfellows. You know, with Sheen, I would just always like tense up my entire body, tense up my throat, tense up my face. You know, it, it, it almost had to be hurting because of how focused I was. And that's how I got the more intense voice on his part. Whereas Fatigue is always smiling, he's always happy, his eyes are nice and wide and bright, and his, his mouth movements are big and loud and wide, just like his energy. So in, in, for me, I'm very much a method actor, and the best way to embody a character voice or to discover what that character would sound like is to just do my best to become them, to make their expressions, to do their poses, and see what happens, you know? It's just as much about sporadic discovery as it is uh, prior planning. <laughs>